How has fashion research changed my view on fashion? This is something that I ask myself quite often because in the past almost two years now, every day I am consumed with the act of looking to learn more stuff on my own. Well, first of all, I never went to fashion school, so everything I learned is on my own. So I don't really have a set curriculum or set direction. It's just kind of what interests me at the moment. I look into it. So for example, I started out with um, Vivian Westwood tartan pattern, and that led me into like British subculture. And from British subculture, looked to punks, casuals, mods, skinheads, and everything. And then I looked into Japanese fashion, and you know, back and forth, a lot of back and forth, or sudden jump to a different point, like African fashion, right? So this is something that I think about a lot, and also something that I like to keep myself in check, because. Knowing myself, sometimes I guess making something too rigid of a learning schedule can take the fun away from it. But also, it's just one of those moments that、um, more the more research, the more knowledge is actually going to ruin how fun fashion is for me. You know what I mean? Because I learn more about it, and it's like, oh damn, this is getting like too getting too academic. Academic, academia, acad- yeah, getting too academic, and everything's like too literal. It took the fun away from just buying a piece of clothing. So I like to, once again, keep myself in check, knowing that while I'm learning more about fashion, but I'm still enjoying the, I guess, the simpler side of fashion, the more superficial side of fashion, which is just simply enjoying clothes for what they are. So today I want to make this video kind of as a video journal, telling you where I'm at with fashion right now, what has research done to me, and what fashion was to me as a comparison to now, and then kind of show you my journey through this fashion world. Like kind of docu, like a mini documentary, but it's like a one video at a time type of deal. So what was fashion to me? Fashion was something that's super limited to basically never wear shorts. I hated wearing shorts growing up. But also one of the biggest factor, I guess, biggest fashion thing in my life back then would be my mom. She is always layering clothes, which I never understood when I was younger. She's always layering like. Black on black on gray on black on white and then a white scarf and then she would like leave the house wearing seventeen different layers and I would never understand that and she would take three hours to find a good fit. I used to think that's crazy, but now I kind of understand. So, fashion for me before this whole journey was kind of limited to my mom's comment of what I'm wearing. Um, also, I went through like a bodybuilding gym phase and therefore my. Idea of fashion is really limited to hey, what's I'm gonna wear something that can show my gains. That's what I thought about. So, so something you know, super tight, tight t-shirts.、Um, yeah, basically tight t-shirts and even like button-up shirts. I needed to be you know snug around the arms, snug around the chest, so it can show off you know my progress. And that was up until the age of I guess eighteen, nineteen, and then my friend kind of started exposing me to like. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, my mom kind of exposed me to a lot of these stuff already, but it's like in hindsight. But when I was like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, my friends started exposing me to like Babe,、um, Antisocial Social Club, Four Two Four, a lot of these brands that I think was pretty cool. Not that they are like super cool. I need to buy them, but they're like pretty cool. Oh wow! Like I understand why people. Would get behind this. I understand why people will find this, you know, good looking. And at one point, I really wanted that babe、um, jersey, which is like a bulls jersey, but like babe, I really wanted that for some reason. I think I'm gonna look really good in that. I probably would not. But my early relationship with fashion is basically brand names and what my mom wears and tell me to wear. And in hindsight, once again, my mom's wearing like Yoji Comme des Garçons, has like three pairs of Anne Millemeister boots. <laughs> just, I mean, just to list a few. But that's kind of what my mom's wardrobe looked like. So in hindsight, right now looking back, it's like, oh damn, yeah, obviously you're gonna have to layer. You're wearing Yoji. Come on, you have to layer wearing Yoji. So transitioning from this older. Perspective transitioning from this older perspective of kind of treating fashion as just like a one and done. This is something I only need to interact with when I go out, when I you know 
put on an outfit after 19 like when i get to college i start to really you know really think about what i wear still fits trash i start to be more <laughs> conscious about um what i wear and how i want to i guess present myself every day going to classes that's first year so i still go to classes every day so after i got into fashion researching actually take fashion research as a serious thing that is something that i want to learn that's something that i kind of want to make a career out of but yeah a more genuine interest in wanting to understand more about the brands first of all the brand history the designers and then kind of slowly blend into like philosophies and theories and how fashion works in a societal point of view in a yeah in a social point of view in a political point of view right everything like that the way fashion was changed for me fundamentally through researching is because the more i learn the more i understand that there are layers to fashion there are a lot of things that changed after i started taking fashion seriously or fashion research seriously now i have uniforms uniforms meaning there are certain things that i would only wear wear a certain thing as mentioned in one of my TikTok video, I most likely would only wear a polo shirt with a straight leg uh, pair of jeans and cuff it and wear boots. It's like the, you know, skinhead, naughty boy, uh, Perry boys type um, outfit. I don't know why for some reason that just, you know, really, I I'm like really drawn to that style. So wearing the polo shirt now, I, I would only wear it that way. And it wasn't like that for me before, before learning about fashion. But because now I'm exposed to that side of fashion, of subculture, that's how I would wear things. Or knowing that I don't need a certain piece to look good. Once again, something that I'm getting more and more into, you know, kind of a, a consolidating idea in my head that I don't need a certain piece to look good in an outfit. You know what I mean? Like uh, when I see a certain pair of pants and then they, the way they style is so gorgeous, but I think to myself, can I do the same thing without these pieces? Yes, I can. May not have the same look, may not have the same effect, but still, it will still be a good outfit in the, per in the you know, in the peripheral of what that outfit is. I'm kind of trying to get, you know, to be peaceful, to be at peace with the thought that I don't need a certain piece to look good. Once again, fashion research changed. That's what it changed. But it's not just the appearance of fashion. It's not just the style. It's not just the outfit. It's also the understanding and love and interest into fashion. It is the nuances that's new to me. The nuances of fashion is something that's completely new, something that I've never thought about, looked at, or talked about before I started researching fashion. The more you learn, you know that fashion is not just a physical thing. It's also a social concept. It's something that you interact with every day consciously subconsciously you see in your peripheral fission and it absorbs into your mind and it kind of creates a certain image or idea of how fashion should work for you you know it's every bit of micro and macro movement and interaction that fashion actually exists in our daily lives but it's also noticing that fashion itself as an ecosystem is really chaotic but that's what makes it fun it is learning that the tailors and the military has a really intrinsic relationship never knew that it is learning the history of harajuku the history of urahara and then the you know the political state of japan back then and how it allowed all these one of the funkiest ideas most fun most interesting most otherworldly ideas to blossom it is also learning that politics and fashion is so intertwined that if you just look deeper into each collection look deeper into how this collection came to life look at how this designer was molded when they were growing up and what, you know, I guess what year they live in and how different political movements shape how they think, how, you know, the social phenomenon they were brought up in changed the way they think in terms of fashion. It is also learning that eating disorder, body dysmorphia, all these body images issue is also heavily intertwined with fashion it is also learning that the garment industry taking the brands away taking the designers celebrities away without the brand names without the glamorous side the garment industry can get really chaotic and vicious and competitive and dirty i'd say the garmentos it is also i guess this is one of the most important thing in my fashion journey so far learning that a lot of these sociologists, philosophers, psychologists, any kind of people that normally does not touch on fashion as their main facet of research, 
have probably talked about fashion in a, you know a certain point in their some of their paper like Walter Benjamin, Freud, Karl Marx, a lot of other people, and then they just the way they illustrate fashion as a concept, as a social phenomenon, and how people use fashion to interact or, or what fashion stands for in a society is really fascinating. And combining all of these things that I've learned, it is that I can apply and I, I can digest, I can evaluate what I've learned and apply these to modern day fashion criticism, um, analysis. When I look at a collection now compared to two years ago, things are drastically different. I can see things, I can connect the dots that I previously did not see was at play there because once again, you know, I didn't have the knowledge to. But now it's like, does it matter if I point something out and then the designer never mention anything about that? So let's say I look at it, um, the recent um, Y Project collection, I pointed out that, oh, this type of pattern is a really, um, it's, it's called disruptive camo pattern, which is instead of hiding you, you, you know, the modern day um, uh, camel pattern where it hides your body within the environment, that type of disruptive camel pattern basically make the body look different from afar. So instead of the normal silhouette that your body would appear in, let's say the sweater I'm wearing right now, the lines and patterns disrupt the normal silhouette of the body. And that's called disruptive camel pattern that hides your body or uh, you know, mess up the perception. It's like a visual illusion, right? The fact that I can point that out and the fact that Glenn Martin's probably never said anything about disruptive camel pattern, does that make me wrong? It kind of doesn't matter because as long as my argument or my, my criticism or analysis makes sense, it's valid. Like I say something about disruptive camel pattern and I point it out to you and you think that, oh yeah, like that is exactly what you're talking about even though the designer never really said anything about it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It makes the collection more fun, right? Like these nuances, this, these tiny details that was brought to life because now I can spot them with the things I research, with the knowledge I've accumulated over the last two years, makes the collection more fun, makes me talking about the collection more fun instead of just, oh, look at the pink, look at the blue, look at the color combination of the brown and the red, right? It's, it's not just that, it is spotting things that I guess normally people would not be able to spot and I tell you and then you're like, oh my God, yes, that that's it. That, oh my God, never see that, see that way. And now you learn something and now I'm able to apply what I've learned to, I guess, modern day fashion analysis, which is ultimately what I'm trying to do. So in conclusion, I just want to tell you that if you are interested in learning about fashion the way I am right now, the way I do right now, you know, all these printing out all these papers, annotating them, you know, just random papers you find online, Blood and Couture, Dracula by Eiko Ishioka, one of my favorite paper I've read. Um, if you are interested in learning fashion this way instead of the formal way through fashion school and you're scared to make this step because it looks like a huge amount of work, first of all, it is. It is a huge amount of work, but is it rewarding? Is it beneficial or equally beneficial as going to school, having someone teach you? I think it can be if you are determined, if you're consistent with it and you know how to actively practice what you've learned, actively how to apply what you've learned, what you've read. I think it can be a really beneficial thing. So if you're scared to take that step, I highly encourage you to take a leap of faith. Um, I've actually written like a really simple fashion history guide um, telling you what you can do to start. There's no there's no real correct starting point, but what you can do to start book recommendations. I talked about what to avoid, what to do, what not to do from my personal opinion, obviously, from my personal journey on what I what mistake, what kind of mistakes I've made and what worked for me. That fashion history guide would be a great start or if, if not just go to a library, just start reading randomly. Like you will find your footing once you start reading because you will know, oh, this is not something that I like to learn. But wait, hold on. I read about this when I'm reading this book, this one tiny terminology or one designer, it sounds like they're really interesting. Then you look for that designer, expose yourself to a lot of things. Naturally, you will find the path you're interested 
and researching and learning and it will expand into a lot of different directions it's definitely not a waste of time and i hope this video gives you i guess encouragement to take that leap of faith once again but this video is more of a, like a like a video journal for myself to keep myself in check to let myself know talk to my future self kind of where i am at with fashion what has research how has research helped me in what way and i'm looking forward to how I feel about fashion and you know the next time i do this type of video hope you enjoy this video it's really there's not a lot of facts there's not a lot of like historical insights not that type of video it's really just um a personal diary to myself and i hope you as a spectator of me talking to my future self learn something about my process and learned why fashion research really been beneficial for me and how it changed me and change my point of view on fashion.